Let's jump right into the match. It is going to be Elevate starting out on attack, World Best Gaming on defense. Kitchen Trophy Room is going to be the site of our first skirmish here on Chalet. Not too surprising, WBG will go to defense first. Sky's rocking the IQ. That's going to be interesting there for them to see. Have him on that entry frag. And of course with IQ giving you those frag grenades and the three speed along with the strong guns, I'm actually surprised that we really haven't seen IQ as a bit more prominent role. I know that Gun Havoc has been favoring her an awful lot, but I just find that a lot of people were suggesting that with all this trap meta coming out, IQ would see a rise in pick rate. In all reality, all we have seen is Thatcher cemented as one of the most crucial operators to run, something we've seen every single season, and obviously no different now as well. Yeah. And on the note of Thatcher being uh, one of the most commonly picked, of course, the other two anti-electronics are going to be the ones like you, like you talked about here. And I'm a little surprised by that. I mean... Most of the time when we've seen an IQ and a Twitch, we've also even seen a Thatcher there. And also, usually if you're doing something along those lines, you'll have a Thermite. But in this instance, since we're attacking in the Kitchen Trophy, which is, of course, the predictable bomb site to be defending first, there's no need for a Thermite, really. An interesting selection overall for Elevate. But they are going to be executing in a very common way, and that's going to be taking from the library. So the thought process between or for taking from library over to the master office is basically that they don't have to deal with any roam game coming from the flank once they eventually, inevitably, take control over master office because that's going to be their next stop. And there you could Attackers see a couple of the roamers from the defenders team. falling back into the bomb site early on because they already, so early on, lost that roam presence in the library. They didn't even contest it. There is one more roamer, though, upstairs. A very dangerous game being played there. And Gun Havoc downstairs, just trying to apply as much pressure as possible for as long as possible. That will be negated, of course, by shuttles. Excellent use of the jackal detection there. Very efficient take so far from Elevate. Applying a lot of pressure to these roamers, forcing them out of their positions. Not wasting any time doing it. Normally at this point I would find that at least 30 more seconds would have transpired, but no. World Best Gaming also has rotations from Master down into the main bomb site, and that's a smart play. I'm surprised with how hands-off right now WBG is, and just allowing this room to maneuver for Elevate. As you can see now, they're going to take Master Bathroom, begin doing some remodeling upstairs, and Skies is going to put that gadget to good use as they survey Ooh. where to make a push. They are going to spot the Ella of Gun Havoc, and that is going to be a very key frag if they're able to get it off. They're going to try to pincer him there, and Skies gets a kill. Laxing did have the crossfire in case he decided to move, and that was a great play and about a coordination from Elevate to take out one of the strongest members of WBG and now make it so that they're reliant on the last four. You can see Dynasty is going to take some damage as that Rook. And I'm going to question the Rook over a, go a dock here, but that's something we can get into next time around. As the time takes away here, the roam game not overly successful in the anchor game, also proving the same way as Laxing walks in, gets a sick double kill onto Temper and Dynasty. That's some ex excellent entry fragging there. Can see Yeti technically, but doesn't hit the shot as Yeti falls deeper into Trophy. Tranks with the refrag onto Shuttle. That is oh so essential in this two versus four now but they are both playing inside this main hallway. The Twitch actually going to be overlooked in the corner. Yeti getting the diffuser, but not seeing Laxing right behind him. What a misplay there. Laxing able to get the refrag, but they do need to have the diffuser plant. Tranks is above. He can deny this diffuse plant outright. Skies is going to be the one who has to save this for his team, and he will do so. An excellent execution of Tranks as he drops down into the kitchen. And a nice attack there from Elevate, but an almost perfect recovery from World Best Gaming. And a good first round to start us off here. I can't believe that the cover of smoke was able to keep Laxing and Yeti inches yeah. apart and not able to see one another. Unfortunate for them, but I mean, it was still a high priority frag. Yeti was, of course, able to get that diffuser as it was going down, which in another scenario could have even been more valuable than potentially tussling with that twitch and losing the diffuser and having to disable it as well. But of course, Skies there, able to clean up tranks and. When that hatch is open and you're upstairs, you have, as I've said before, you've telegraphed your next strategy and there wasn't really much for him to do. A big round from Laxing, as you can see, and Tranks almost saves it for them. Yeah, and on that note of Tranks almost saving it, it come, I think a lot of that comes down to the fact that he was, he, was, he was so close. If World Best Gaming had not lost so many roamers early on in that round, if they had even delayed for 
just a couple more seconds that would have been their round. But because L8 was so efficient with that roam clear, not only getting the kills, but saving the time, then the actual take wasn't so difficult. Interestingly here from Elevate, we're actually going to see a bomb site of the uh, basement rather than the kitchen trophy, which is a little bit different, although well, you know, that is your secondary bomb site, even if it's not your primary, so you're going to be going there eventually anyway. And they're going to be anchoring a little bit harder, it seems, than what we were seeing from World Best Gaming. As uh, World Best Gaming on their attack, they start their roam game very early on as well, not quite as efficiently as Elevate. Elevate was already in the building at this point, but still getting started pretty well. And I'm surprised, like I said, I was surprised with how much room they gave them. Elevate was just able to walk right in. And really, you didn't see a lot of mileage out of that roam game, too. The Ella of Gun Havoc wasn't really able to do any damage. He tried to creep up on them, couldn't do it. Laxing's going to continue his strong play and get frag number four for him on the game. On to Yeti. And that's them losing their Ying. We saw the same thing with King George last time around. You've lost your Ying. That's all that utility. Those three Candelas and those two smoke grenades go to the grave with Ying. And of course, Laxing is going to need to pick up upstairs. Trying to do some drone work. He's going to get a nice kill there onto Laxing as he's down, and he's just going to wait for Skies to push up, but Skies thinks otherwise and heads back down into Wine Cellar. And you can see that Gun Havoc priming that frag to hit oh. that grenade. Oh, he almost gets Skies. That grenade indicator comes up, and he's able to scoot away at the last second as it does get the barbed wire, but misses him by a hair. Yeah, but World Best Gaming, they do have the control of the top floor and the middle floor. They have actually managed to cordon off the last four defenders into the bomb site. So no worry about the roamers whatsoever. And now they can start to utilize that control and the buck specifically to open up the holes and get the lines of sight that they need on those anchors. As soon as they start doing that, England's going to be pushed off this mirror window as many, as well as many other positions, and it's going to become oh so much harder for Elevate to actually maintain control of the bomb site and deny the defuse plant. But World Best Gaming, they need to start that now. Skies looking to roam, but being caught out by the jackal will be forced back into the wine cellar. Good rotation there. World Best Gaming, despite having all this control, aren't really making much use of it so far. They haven't opened up Snowmobile with that Habana. They haven't really put any pressure under the drop downs. They're not opening enough necessary holes. They have disabled the mirror window, it seems, but that's one step of many. Temper gonna get a kill onto Keith Geo and a nice successive kill from Dynasty onto Shuttle. Will be looking good for World Best Gaming here. Skies though with the refrag as he roams upstairs in the top floor onto Tranks. Dynasty. Taking out the last anchor, it's all down to Skies in a one on three. He's going to have to get a 4K, I believe, to actually win this round. As the defuse plant comes down, it's not looking good for him. He's got a lot of hurdles to jump over. Temper playing from outside on the snowmobile garage, looking for the angle to the main stairs. Gun Havoc playing in the back hall. And good use of the Ella charges there from Skies, but it's not good enough as it will not hit any of the enemy. Dynasty playing on top of the A bomb site. Gonna be looking for the angle, but it will be Gun Havoc, in fact, to get the kill on Skies. Nice attempt in vain, unfortunately, there, but a good execution for World Best Gaming overall. Efficient roam clear, same as Elevate, containing the defenders, denying the roam game any significant use into the latter end of that round, and simply clearing up the anchors. A big mistake at play by the smoke of Elevate as well to expose their heels to that drone hole by Snowmobile Garage. Yeah. That's a mistake that we saw King George make as well, and it's something that you just really can't be doing at this at this time when you're playing against teams like this, largely because it's gonna cost you your life. We see it time and time again, and now your smoke is down, and that allowed WBG to just collapse on the site, and Skies had to retake. And you know what the fundamental reason behind that drone hole kill is? And uh, it's uh, a lot of people, of course, are gonna, Defenders this is really basic, bomb. right? But a lot of what Pro League comes down to is angle play. Um, denying positions that can be played by the defenders is one of your primary objectives as an attacker. You push them into locations where you have somebody already waiting, and that drone hole is just another angle that the defenders have to think about of the all so many that they already have at their disposal. And as those angles start to slip away, they don't really think about the abnormal ones, such as, hey, a drone hole, that doesn't really pop into their head as like, oh yeah, I have to worry about this, as they're thinking about all this other stuff going on. But, Overall, that's just good coordination for World Best Gaming, and unfortunately, like you said, an oversight from Elevate. And now, we are defending, yet again, the Kitchen Trophy here. 
for World Best Gaming. They were very unsuccessful here last time, and I think it comes down to a lack of any Attackers emphasis on the roam defeat. game, Attackers and then more importantly, good read on the roam game from Elevate. This time around, it seems that World Best Gaming is actually going to be putting said emphasis into the library with two players now, and that might be the turning point that they need to start making this round count go into their favor. I like a change that WBG has done. Gun Havoc there looked like he was potentially going to go for the spawn peak. They've switched him off to a roamer now, which is something that I don't think we've seen him do so far in the Pro League, is Gun Havoc fulfilling that role of almost IGL, which has now been thrust onto Yeti. Now Gun Havoc is roaming. Of course, one of the things that we first addressed when Gun Havoc was being introduced to us for this season was how good he is off-site. And the fact that he is a good shot. They were able to take him down in round number one, and that was a crucial frag, so it's going to be incumbent upon him to stay alive and really take advantage of his fragging capability and to take out at least one or two members of Elevate, at least taking out Elevate early on. And we can see now that even though they made their way inside the building, a minute has been ex exhausted so far, and WBG is trying to position themselves to get a frag. Skies gets lead off kill onto Temper. That is one of the roamers down. He'll take out that Mute Jammer and push up. As you can see, Gun Havoc is gonna wait to tangle with him. This fight, though, on the main stairs, Skies has been pretty triumphant in this regard so far Activated. in this map. And Gun Havoc is actually going to default further back down into the fireplace, it seems. Tranks coming up these main stairs to try and support his teammates as Elevate starts to pressure on through the library. Gun Havoc getting spotted out, but Tranks running up the main stairs yet again, catching Kijio off guard. Gun Havoc with another frag through the drop down, taking out Skies, a much more successful roam game, despite the fact that Shuttle gets the refrag onto Gun Havoc repositioning to the main hallway. There is still only one minute left to go, and it is a three on three. The defenders have the positions to work with here to continue to hold this bomb site, and Elevate now are the ones with the pressure on their shoulders. Attackers Calm before the storm, England will disconnect. Unfortunate for them as he was still alive, but it does look like we are going to play on with this round. Laxing, despite being a numbers advantage against him, will take out Tranks, and now it's a 2v2. So until we wait for England to get back, we'll play on. And now Yeti versus Yeti and Dynasty, the last two members left as Shuttle and Laxing. All four of these players are capable of winning this round for their respective teams. There will be a race against the clock with 20 seconds. Laxing attacks that barbed wire and will need to inch his way up. He sees Dynasty, goes for the pre-fire, misses, gets a couple shots, which land, but he still needs to get inside. They do have the diffuser in Shuttle's capable hands, and they'll try to flush out Yeti, who's playing inside of that trophy room. They'll soften the wall up. Shuttle will take some significant damage, and a shot through it as Dynasty takes him down. Shuttle gets a kill onto him, and it's just up to Yeti, who'll run up, and oh, it's over this round. Yeti with the knife kill to finish things off. And look at those stats. Laxing and Skies doing a tremendous job for their team. 2-1 WBG. And the first lead for WBG first lead as well. in Pro League so far for them. Yeah, and that is that is oh so crucial going into this match. It seems like they have a better... I, th I have to say, 84% to 16% in favor of Elevate. I feel like that's a bit of, just a bit uh, off balance for what we're seeing here so far. Um, WBG putting up a heck of a fight. It makes it some good adaptations too. I really have to emphasize what they did on their roam game there. So the last time they were defending the Kitchen Trophy, it was in fact, um, they didn't really roam. Right. And they had they had one guy in the basement and everyone else just kind of fell off the top floor, went back into the site and waited for the push to come. That guy down in the basement, Gun Havoc, didn't really get any work done. Um, and in this, this time around, they put up a much more of a fight, they wasted a ton of time, and they came away with an even man count on the roam game, which is also oh important. So great job to WG doing that. Good changes there. Um, we did have, a, of course, a bit of a crash there from Shuttle, so we will be doing a quick rehost. We'll be back into the match in just a second. Um, on that last round, what really stood out to you? Well, I mean, it was a it was a 3v3, England disappears, and I think that was the biggest factor to me, is that you lose England and immediately Laxing picks up that kill. It would have essentially put them at a 2v3. 
But in this case, you now find themselves at even strength with time running out, and they had to run up, and the moment they tried to take that site, it was a good job by Yeti to deny them the push through the door. They were still able to get through. Shuttle lost a bunch of his life, but Laxing paused. Laxing, of course, falls through that doorway. They trade. Dynasty goes down as well, and then it was just Yeti versus Shuttle. At that point, Shuttle has no choice yeah. but to get the defuse off, and when it's seven seconds, you are exposed, and it's a one-on-one -on -one Unless they're very far off site, you're going to be able to get there in time, and there was just no chance. If if England hadn't disconnected, then they would have had a lot more opportunities to take that site. And you would have had England providing some covering fire as well, because you saw Laxing was lined up for it, but then had to rotate to the front of that kitchen to try to help him in case Dynasty pushed up. If you had an extra body, I think that would have made a big difference. Yeah, that extra man just to cover the angle, because of course it would have been the same situation, right? right. But then one extra gun, oh look, Yeti's running through the smoke. Oh, well, easy frag, right? And the shuttle gets the defuse plan off or not. Regardless, it doesn't really matter. Unfortunate set of circumstances there, but it was still really well played from World Best Gaming, despite the disconnect and the, uh, from Elevate. Um, and I think that they're going to be able to continue that forward on Chalet. It seems like World Best Gaming has some really interesting interpretations of Chalet and a good understanding of it overall. I think that in this match so far, of course, we've only seen three rounds played. Um, but it has been, from World Best Gaming, the best adaptation we've seen from oh, outright in this entire Pro League. Um, and Elevate seems to be playing a little bit more rigid, which is counter to their typical play style. And I hope that they can loosen up a little bit moving forward. But... Um, if World Best Gaming continues to play this kind of game, I think that they're going to take at least this map number one. And that might be a little bit early to call it, of course, with a one-round lead, but it has been looking good. They've looked like a very different team, and I think some of that also can go to the change from Gun Havoc. I know that they're working with their coaches, and one thing I wanted to touch upon on the game prior that I didn't actually get an opportunity to do so is how good of a job Ranger has done with Rogue earlier on. Having coaches is something that is not really new to Rainbow Six, but we are certainly seeing their impact increase over the last season or two, and I think that's going to make a big change going forward because it allows another set of eyes that's disengaged from the action to tell you. And you, when you've got somebody saying, no, I don't think you're good in this position, no, I think a, a better change would be this, it removes the egos from those roles, and now having Gun Havoc switch off of Anchor to Roamer is already paying dividends for them. You Even if you have a player who's playing a position who's not even egotistical, if he's just a player who's like, he's playing a position and it's not working for him, sometimes right. he won't even see that. Absolutely. And it's really great to have a coach in a position to tell you that. And of course, um, some of you may have known this, that World Best Gaming's coach is in fact, I believe, Ken's, yes. who is a little bit of a lesser known coach in this uh, community, but he does put in a lot of work, as you can clearly see from the changes that World Best Gaming have implemented since the last time they played. Um, and that's... Yeah, that's really good to see. You've got Ken's, you've got Bacon, you've got um, Shaz, a lot of guys who, you know, Shaz, of course, with a coach for Penta, who, a lot of guys who put in more work than is seen um, immediately by a lot of people. But coaches, on, on the note of what you were talking about, coaches are now becoming, I think, the norm yeah. for teams in the Pro League. Um, if you don't have one as a Pro League team, you put yourself at a significant disadvantage. But that said, that conversation aside, we're going to get back into Chalet. The score is going to be 2 to 1 in favor of World Best Gaming on this first map of this Best of 3 series. And we will continue from where we left off. We will have World Best Gaming on attack, elevate on defense, and it will be a kitchen trophy hold. And of course, ignore that 0 0 scoreline, ladies and gentlemen, as there you go. It gets updated. Two to one for WBG. They'll go to attack, and Gun Havoc still sticking with that IQ. Attackers I think that IQ is going to fall out of favor. I I like that Sky's played him, played her for one round, but I don't know if it's uh, I don't know if we're going to see it again emerge. Of course, Gun Havoc playing that so successfully. No real different operator choices at the moment for WBG, and now of course we see a distinct lack of a trap meta on the elevate side. Really surprised by that. No uh, no Ella. That that really honestly. I think that might be them, maybe a little bit of a moral thing there. I'm not sure what's going on. Maybe there's, uh, maybe it's the castle. They need the castle, so they don't want to bring the Ella, but then why not just like rotate out the bandit? We're talking about a, we're talking about a kitchen trophy defense. Do you need a bandit? Do you, do, do you even need a Mira? If you're using the mirrors, they got to be upstairs. This is your primary focus on the top floor. Okay, so the primary focus, I guess, why they brought the Mira and the bandit has got to be, they're trying to use the Mira with bandit charges upstairs to hold off the roam clear that's the only explanation i can really come up for come up with uh, um maybe they have some new i want to see where those mirror windows are Marisu, could we see where those mirror windows are 
So they are going to be placed upstairs. So that is actually going to be the strategy. That's exactly what it is. Using the mirror windows upstairs with bandit batteries is their specific focus. So they had no actual rotation of the operator opportunities here, as they also need the Jaeger and the Valkyrie. So the lack of an Ella, very calculated from Elevate. I like that, although it is kind of surprising still. Kichio going to get the first kill of the round. That's going to be on Tranks outside. Good run out use of cams there by the Valkyrie player. That's a really wonderful cam too, and it's very similar to the one we saw in Cafe that Fox A did in the, in the very first Ooh, week Yeti. as well. It comes very close. And now Kijio's just going to sit upstairs. Not an unusual strategy to see a Valk hang out up top and use those cams to watch and surveil. Maybe pop out and get a frag or two. Impatience from Shuttle. He'll pop the mirror and rotate as he hears that castle barricade being picked away at. The shuttle sits on top of those stairs. WBG struggling to get inside. No doubt that the loss of both Tranks and now Yeti are going to severely impact their ability to push freely into the site. Laxing, who's been doing very, very well so far today, which is good to see from Laxing, especially since we haven't seen him pull out his patented oh, Blackbeard just well, yet. Doing, uh, I guess, this entire match so far on Twitch, on attack. And that F2 is a nice weapon to have at your disposal when switching to another operator. Oh yeah, absolutely. I mean, if you're gonna be rotating off Blackbeard, I mean, arguably Blackstein's one of the better Blackbeards in the North American region. Um, right up there with the likes of uh, Young or King George, you know, a lot of guys who are really excel at that role. Not playing him as much is uh, gotta be a little bit different, but he's been doing some good work despite that fact. And now as the castle, Laxing's going to be holding this B window push. It looks like that's the only strat that WBG really has up their sleeve. And Laxing just holding the corner nice and easy against three attackers. Now going to get two kills, or at least one down, as Kid Geo <laughs> finishes off the downed player. It is going to be down to Gun Havoc now in a 1 versus 5. 20 seconds to go, 1 HP, or 1 bullet's worth of HP. Not looking good for him. He's going to be challenged first by shuttle on these main west lobby stairs. They're just waiting for the pressure. But oh, look, there's Kid Geo again with the final kill of this round, eliminating Gun Havoc. Putting it now into a 2 2 even round count. Kind of just seemed like World Best Gaming got stalled out on that round. They lost Tranks right away, and that was, yeah. I think. For me, I, I was assuming that they were probably going to try to take advantage of that main lobby, be able to buck underneath, flush out the roamers, which we saw the bandit doing from above, and then be able to make their push. When they lost them, that would knock them on their heels, and it's one of those things where you just you don't have the ability to recover as well as you need to, and we're tied up. But now they're going to go to defense and see if they can hold as well as they did last time. I really like that roam game from Elevate. Um, we can't overlook it because it's something that doesn't happen very often. Uh, the specific roam game that they utilized, it ex it it wasn't ex overly exposed and it was really well contained. And I gotta appreciate what they did there. They had the hit that mirror window that was facing towards library behind the chimney, um, which is great use of that uh, mirror window upstairs because normally when we have that mirror strat, it's just just over by master office, and they'll put both of them over there, and they'll, they get cleared out by a Twitch drone, and that's that. But the having control emphasized on both sides of the top floor is really cool to see. Um, I also, you know, it's it's also nice to see that Ella, an operator who is arguably one of the best defensive operators right now in this current meta, not seeing play, but yet it being extremely well calculated by the fact that they needed every other role on that defense. That's, a, that's the sort of strategy that is well thought out, and it's always cool to see them, where you take away all preference picks, and it comes down to what do we, as a team, need in this round. You gotta appreciate that. Elevate has taken control of main garage. You saw above that when Shuttle pushed in, a bit of a worry with that open hatch. And they've lined their, their pieces up now, and it's just a matter of whether they can get control of this board. You can see that Geo has already been hit by the concussion mine, and he won't last very long from above. Gun Havoc establishing his dominance over top of that trophy window, and a very good opening frag for WBG to ensure that this round starts off better than it did for them last. So, of course, one of the primary um, parts, one of the primary cogs in the machine of attacking onto the wine cellar is establishing control of the trophy. 
But if the defenders can deny you that from above, then they'll do that. And usually you'll have the attackers then instead start to push onto the master balcony before they push into trophy. But in this instance, that didn't happen. And Gun Havoc has now repositioned himself behind Shuttle on this attack. And Elevate not only lost a player early on, their primary roam clear in that Jackal, but also now have to deal with a Gun Havoc Ella player all the way in Big Garage, who they are not 100% conscious of. This is a lot of bad happening for Elevate all at once. Especially as the time ticks down as to 120 in this round left. All he needs to do here is wait patiently. Doesn't need to apply any unnecessary pressure. Especially now that his teammate Temper, his backup on that West Lobby, has been eliminated by Shuttle. That's a good refrag, very important for Elevate. But it's ultimately not going to matter, as again, those Roamers are still in great positions to continue to apply pressure to this Wine Cellar attack, which has lost a lot of teeth since they don't have that big garage control. As England opens up, the wine cellar closet, Dynasty is going to be the one with the brunt of, facing the brunt of his attack, and he will do so excellently, taking out Laxing outside the main wine cellar closet. But now he's pinched, pinched in this corner, and Elevate is well aware of him. The final 30 seconds. England's going to look to try to push into that closet from the hallway. He's going to have to tangle with both Yeti and Dynasty before he can do that. And you see Gun Havoc is just sitting and waiting as the flank to push up. The moment that they're able to establish control, you will see that Skies will have to push in, and Gun Havoc is primed and ready. Good position right now for WBG to capitalize. You'll see Skies will come up, doesn't check his angles. England's gonna get a kill, immediate refrag from Gun Havoc as England is down, yet he gets a shotgun kill. It's just shuttle left. He's gonna try to come on to site, but Trikes finishes it off, and WBG, what a performance, will regain the lead by a score of three to two on a very good hold. Look at that angle from Temper, not risking anything in that fight. It would have been incredible to see Shuttle hit that shot. Honestly, probably would have been straight luck. And just a great hold overall for World Best Gaming. Now, it mostly comes down to the fact that Elevate was um, incapable of denying the Rome game. And if you're talking about a wine cellar attack, um, it's a good attack strategy. And I would say one of the easier ones to execute. The main thing, though, is you have to deny the Rome game flanking you later in that round. If you cannot contain the Romers on a wine cellar attack, it will almost always fall apart. And you saw Elevate, they tried to adapt. They were conscious of the mistake they made. They knew they didn't have enough time to reciprocate and take that big, uh, big garage control and then establish master and trophy. They knew they didn't have time to do that. So their answer to the question of, okay, well then how do we attack is, Let's just, instead of relying on that crossfire that is also important of opening up the main wine cellar wall and the closet, let's just open up the closet and try to push on that. Now, if it were the case that the mute playing over by the um, big uh, uh, the dining table inside a wine cellar, if it were that that mute hadn't got the kill on, I believe that was the thermite pushing in, then we probably would have seen that attack be a little bit more successful. But because of that um, that initial entry frag was eliminated. It really wasn't a lot that there really wasn't a lot that Elevate could do in that round, losing too many um, tiers of their attack. Now we're going to be defending the basement here for Elevate. This is going to be their first time on this site. I like that they brought out a glass with them, hoping to get a bit more going, a bit more fragging power off of their attack. Now, if you remember last round that they were on the attack. They lost right away because Tranks went down in the ensuing 30, or in the first 30 seconds of action. That was a problem for them. They don't have Geo up top. Instead, they've put him onto the smoke, given Laxing that role of Valkyrie to get those cams down, but not really need to beat them. And this is really important here. WBG has been successful where Elevate failed on the last round. They have established control over Trophy, and as a result, they have control over the Rome game. They can contain any flanks that will come from the drop downs into Big Garage and the West Lobby Stairs. That's the only way that the uh, defenders can flank them, apart from, of course, the the uh, main lobby into Dining and the master, uh, master drop down. But again, that's still covered by the buff. Some supporting fire for WBG as they push up towards that open hatch. Now, thanks to the ex Kairos of Hibana, and both Yeti and Gun Havoc are going to, <laughs> I guess, inchworm their way or army crawl their way towards that opening. Shuttle is the lone man there to bandit trick. As you can see, Tranks is sitting from above, and I think that Buck is going to be a big question mark as they go forward. 
A nice smoke in from Dynasty. And another is going to go off now as well. That's going to flush out that A site and push them back. And Shuttle is going to be in a very awkward spot. As you can see, a Candela goes down. And what a frag from Yeti using a tight angle. That's going to push Shuttle out of the fight. And he's done for round number three. An advantage in favor of WBG as they look to try to take match point, or take us to match point, rather. Temper will get that plant down before he gets shredded. Oh, oh a double story kill from Geo. That's a good play there as England goes down to Dynasty. And they're still going to have to worry about that smoke on that second floor, something WBG wasn't anticipating. Laxie will try to come on site, and that's the second defuse down. As Yeti goes down to the Valkyrie of Lax, he's gonna go under fire. Sky's the wild card up top, as Geo's gonna need to get back down on site. A trade as Laxing eliminates Gun Havoc, but Dynasty gets number two, and Tranks picks out Geo. It's just Sky's left, he'll go for Tranks, and it's a 1v1. Sky's versus Dynasty, Glaz versus Ella. And he's gonna have to get that diffuser as Sky's white have to drop through that hatch. A game of chicken, he'll hit him with that concussion mine. Sky's trying to figure out exactly where that Glaz sits from below. He'll have good sights on that diffuser and Dynasty in rough spot. He'll grab it, Skies drops, and I don't know if Dynasty hears him, but he'll wait for that plant. And he can see him, what a oh. shot from Dynasty as WBG steals the round and Skies denied that clutch. They'll push us to match point 4-2 in favor of WBG. Skies played that almost perfectly just slightly better play from dynasty i mean it's not like skies could have done much better there in that situation he gauged the drop correctly he gauged the position of Gal glass correctly he utilized his abilities correctly he did almost everything right it just wasn't enough and it came down to the fact that wbg this is the most important fact came down to the fact that wbg was so incredibly efficient in terms of time in their early roam clear and attack the beginning of the round they got into trophy without any without losing anything time or manpower um they established the control on the roam game and then they simply pushed into wine cellar wasting no time at all and it, even after even after elevate started getting the frags to get themselves back in that round there was still 40 seconds left to go for the 2v2 and that's that's plenty of time for World Best Gaming to take it nice and slow as on their attack, get that diffuser, and go for a late plant, which they didn't end up even getting. But all, all the same is going to be now match point. Ma match point WBG. What is happening? Elevate. I, I don't know if this is a combination of not enough, not enough preparation. I, I'd said in the interview with Skies that they didn't have a lot of footage from Pro League, and that's true. But WBG has been very active in other leagues, other tourneys, other associations, where they are casted and they are streamed. So there are tons of footage, or tons of videos, rather, and a lot of footage for anybody to really find if they need them. And it's incumbent upon you to compete at this level that you need to do your homework. And that's where coaches come in. I think that WBG looks very prepared. I like the change for Gun Havoc. Yeti playing his role very grounded. And it's just, it's, it's unfortunate if you're a fan of Elevate at the moment, because they're just not getting anything going. They just seem like they're being outmaneuvered and you cannot rely on laxing and skies to carry the yeah. way, which is what it looked like against Most Wanted. And now the same thing happening here. That's an excellent point to emphasize there is that it honestly, sometimes it feels like you're just leaving it up to skies and laxing. Um, specifically skies too, as of late. Um, I mean, we saw him in that last second. He played that clutch correctly. Like he could have maybe done a couple of things differently, but ultimately he played the clutch correctly. Laxing though, on the other note, gonna get the first kill this round onto Gun Havoc. That's a good frag. The Rome game still applying pressure to this attack in this round. We'll just jump to this round. We'll off that topic all and altogether. The Rome game from WBG still having an influence on this round, despite um, despite losing their first player in Gun Havoc. You do have two roamers downstairs in the basement. That's Tranks and Temper, and there's only half the round left. So Elevate need to start applying the pressure. Oh, and on that note of the Rome game, Elevate had a huge Rome game on that last round. There wasn't a lot of anchorage really going on inside the bomb site, and I think that also might have hurt their hold just a little bit. I think having Geo upstairs was a mistake. Yes, Agreed. it was great that he could get that high 
impact frag from above, but it was you just didn't have his smoke. Smoke, exactly. And Thank it allowed you. them to walk right in. And yeah, if you're going to use pure gunplay to be able to get those kills, that's one thing. But there's a reason why there are operators designed for area denial and designed that as the time ticks away, they are exceptionally important in the cornerstone of that last minute defense. Smoke, of course, falls into that category. And without him, you're going to have a bad time. We are now just under a minute in what could be the final round between WBG and Elevate on map number one of Chalet. After a rehost, you can see at the top, four to two. And Skies has sustained some significant damage, laxing two, even though Gun Havoc is off the board. But WBG is just going to try to hang on. A very prolific roam game. But we are now in the final 30 seconds. And at the moment, Elevate is stalling out. They're going to push in together, a coordination through West Main, move in towards Trophy, and you can see, whoa, Laxing and Shuttle, two very important kills on both Temper and Dynasty. It's going to fall onto Tranks and Yeti. Yeti is going to go be the last one left as Tranks goes down, and England is able to secure a very important kill. Yeti's going to get one. He's going to dodge that grenade. He's going to go for Skies. Can't do him. He tries. No. Nope. Can't decide whether he's going to take Laxing or Skies down. And now it is a 4-3 in favor of WBG. We inch towards overtime and Elevate still alive. One thing I actually want to emphasize there is that if the smoke had instead of confronting the attackers through the main kitchen doorway there from the trophy hallway, if he had instead of doing taking that fight, if he just rotated around to dining and denied the defuse or even shot through the wall to deny the defuse plant, that would have been a win there for WBG because Elevate took so much time to get into the bombs or to actually yeah to actually make their push and it, it by the way it was just a straight taken through main lobby that is a huge risk but Defenders it worked out for them in the end that's the important thing um but yeah no it could have it could have so easily been a wbg game i was like i was thinking of a smoke oh smoke go into the hallway and just pre-fire through the wall everyone plants at the same spot every single time on this bomb site the same little corner the default is the most commonly planted bomb sometimes you'll see it planted behind the countertop but usually it's just default corner unfortunately he didn't make that play but either way can't reminisce on that it's 4-3 now it's still match point for world best gaming that's the most important thing to emphasize is despite that world best gaming have been playing fantastically throughout this match and um, they've also had some pretty good success attacking onto this bomb site from Elevate. However, mixed at the same time because Elevate's defense strategy gotta love them for this um, slightly new defense strategy here, uh, putting the mirror window facing towards library as well as the mirror window facing towards master it gives them a lot of control over the main ways the attackers will try to establish top four dominance. But as you can see here, WBG have adapted yet again. Props to them for this. And they are instead of emphasizing the, a top four defense or top four control, they're just going to rush into the trophy room using that downstairs control. The grenade from Gun Havoc from below is exactly what is needed to get rid of Laxing inside the bomb site. And now Yeti all the way in, going to get Kid Geo right after Kid Geo takes out Temper, vaulting in through the B window. Shuttle, another frag, someone vaulting in through the B window, but Yeti is there to reciprocate once more. And now a three on two match point still for WBG, and it will be a one on three now with England, the last. Elevate player left alive. Tranks from behind, gonna clean it up, and that is map over for WBG. What an excellent attack in the, through the B window. A great read overall. It was basically this. Okay, last time we attacked this bomb site, what happened? Well, there were two mirror windows upstairs and three players upstairs. So what should we do? We should just attack through the B window, but not just a simple rush through the B window. We're going to use the B window, but also we're going to nade the player inside B from below as we emphasize that push. And it did catch Elevate off guard. Very well played, WBG. Great adaptations. Props. Now, on the other side of things, Elevate. They did manage to get three rounds on that map, but it wasn't enough, and it's not Elevate. It just honestly surprises me. Let's take a look at the highlights from that match. And now you have, if you're Elevate, you've won one map so far out of all the matches you've played since Pro League started this season, and you are now potentially one away from having to deal with relegations. That is an enormous change of pace from what we saw they were capable of last season, from playoffs to the semi or to the finals.
to the second place team at land to now potentially having to defend themselves against the two teams that make it from the top of Challenger League. I would of course argue that Elevate is a bit of a land team. They've always been better, I feel like, at playing on on land than online. And we've got a lot of examples of teams like that. For example, Penta. Right. Penta is definitely a LAN team. They are the sorts of guys, yeah, they'll play good online. But then when they get to that LAN event, oof, they're unstoppable, something about it. But at the same time, you have to be able to get to LAN in order to actually emphasize those skills. And right. it doesn't seem, it seems like Elevate's just different from what we've seen from them in the past. Um, and I don't know if that's to do with the roster changes of, uh, leading into the season with Geo being brought on. I doubt it. He seems to be a good change for the team. I'm not sure what it is exactly. But, of course, that was Chalet, WBG's map pick. And moving on to the second map, it's going to be Consulate, which is Elevate's preferred map. So it could be the case that WG, WBG was just more practiced on Chalet. Although, I honestly, I can't even present that argument. That's normally what I would say in a situation like this. But we saw from Elevate a very clearly um, sort of new you know, change on the top floor hold for that tr kitchen trophy specifically. They even utilized a couple older angles, like the one from all the way up in office from, from Geo, that smoke, which is a good angle, but like you said. I don't think the smoke should be playing that. Exactly. Um, so it's not, a co you can't put it, present the argument that Elevate's not practiced on Chalet. You really can't. They were using a lot of really in interesting things. It just seemed like the fundamentals, and this is weird for me to say, because I would have expected to be the complete opposite. But it seems like the fundamentals from WBG is what carried them through there. Good adaptation, not really crazy strategy, just understanding of the map and adapting in a similar fashion to, again, let's compare to Penta. Another thing too is that well, one of the changes that I think is very smart is Yeti was playing a Ying from time to time, but you saw that he could also flex onto that entry fragger roll. And with that last push in particular, yeah, you put Tranks patrolling that main garage beneath to flush out and put pressure from below on the players that were inside of Trophy Room. And then when they were able to climb in through that window and take complete control of that site, you had Yeti now being able to entry frag from there. He got the kill on Geo, it was very important. And then they'd established control already. At that point, Elevate was now boxed out of the site. And just little changes like that, that you see a lot of these teams, they have their defined entry fraggers, they have their defined rushers, their quarterbacks, their supports, that sort of thing. WBG is now able to take different players and thrust them into different roles and it's working and that's something that they didn't do at all against Rogue and now I like these changes and it's really going to come down to how confident Elevate is on Consulate which we are just starting up right now for match number two and Elevate facing their season coming to an end at the hands of WBG on map number two here on North America play day number four. And as we load into the map again, going to be shuttle, or excuse me, elevate starting on attack. Shuttle actually going to be joining them on the attack as well. Let's fancy that. <laughs> but world best gaming on defense, it is going to be the console office meeting room to start us off. I believe that is the top floor. Now, it's interesting that we're on a map now. Okay, we're on a map that is, I would say, oh, I love that they're using... Great, uh, great use of the castle strategy here from WBG. Really allows a lot more flexibility. But anyway, to continue with my point, um, just to cite one thing, you were talking about operator adaptation from the last map, right? And how uh, WBG has been doing a great job of that specifically. Uh, and I agree, 100%. But also, just strategically, their adaptation has been fantastic. Uh, one thing to cite, just one, one thing to reference, excuse me, just specifically, was that change on the last round that we just saw, where instead of attacking very typically, as you would towards the master in the library to clear out those roamers. They saw that Elevate was holding that, and they're just like, we're going to go downstairs into the big garage. We're going to rush in through the big window, and it caught Elevate off guard. So those reads from WBG are fantastic. Now, where I'm trying to go with that conversation is on a map like Consulate, I would argue is even more flexible. There are more opportunities to make those changes mid-round or mid-match on this map than there are on Chalet. So if WBG is able to continue with that mentality, with that um, style of play here, if they have just as many th tricks up their sleeve, then this is going to be—it's going to be hard pressed for Elevate to actually bring this back. And here you can see, just to start us off, mirror window facing towards admin, very typical, trying to delay this push from Elevate. I like that they've put Tranks onto the castle as well. Temper now fulfilling the role of that Roamer in Bandit, or at least 
somewhat on site. They're going to keep Tranks close, and he's used to that roaming role, but I would assume that now that Gun Havoc has fulfilled it, there's going to need to be somebody closer to the site. Sorry about the sound bug there, ladies and gentlemen. It seems to have dissipated. Laxing gets the mirror window. That is oh so important. A Twitch drone is deemed useful 100% if it gets a mirror window. And that's some great use from Laxing. It seemed to have taken him two, but that is still, you know, even if you have to use both of them, he has now freed up the push for his, the rest of his team to go into the meeting hall, and they are doing just that as the mirror has fallen off of his own mirror window into connector tranks. And Mira then, Dynasty, going to be the two players holding off this push into the A bomb site. And the pressure's are starting to mount here as Elevate position themselves perfectly to get a rush, it seems. Trank's going to be hard, holding the hard 90 angle on the doorway. Gets droned out, though, decides to get a little bit more passive. That's smart. But you can see World Best Gaming have two players attackers. in a position to face the brunt of this attack, and then two players in position to get the retake. And just cover the off angles. All 10 operators still up as we hit the 60 second mark remaining. And WBG in for a frenzy as Tranks gets droned out and will get shot at as well. And we'll need to escape that fallen desk in bomb site A. They're going to start their pressure. England's going to be able to pick off Dynasty as first kill, and Elevate already starting off better than they did last time around. With all these walls open, Tranks is going to be in rough shape, and he's going to likely be the next to fall with contact, but Gun Havoc is going to get a very significant kill on Disguise. A grenade is going to go in, and Tranks will get down by it, but not out as he's finished off as Laxing and Shuttle pick up a couple on Gun Havoc and Tranks. That's going to leave a 4v2 as Yeti and Temper still stand for WBG, and everybody but Skies up for Elevate. This 20 seconds as another flash is going to go in. They're going to need to peel Yeti off. He's going to run in. A nut is the wise idea as Yeti gets picked apart. Tepper gets Kajil and now goes for relaxing. He gets him. Just two left. Diffuser going down for England. A shuttle still upright with full health. And Temper just a couple shots through that wall. He'll what a shot from Temper as he's going to go oh! for England. Temper the clutch. You're Unbelievable. Insane. And now just the diffuser as WBG somehow steals a round away from Elevate to take it. First all on Consulate, one nothing. A uh, little bit of a confession to make here, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> uh, we keep track of the score manually on uh, writing it down here throughout these matches. And I, uh, I have to confess, I did write down 1-0 in favor of Elevate uh, as that diffuse plant went down. But no, <laughs> Temper's just like, nah. No, 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 no. So excellent clutch there from Temper, bringing it back and giving them, in fact, World Best Gaming the first round of this map. Woo, that was something. That what an un, what a what a rally that was. Temper comes out of nowhere, manages to secure what was that a 4K to end the round as well. If it wasn't for Gun Havoc picking off Skies early on, your that would have been all Temper and unbelievable for them to be able to take that as a 1v4 clutch mm -hmm. and the diffuser as WBG is now four rounds away from going on to the next round and elevate the pressure is on. And as we start a defense of the bottom floor, elevate, they gotta be feeling like, all right, we gotta batten down the hatches. We, they have to start to like, just really cover everything because there were so many mistakes made by Elevate in that last round that allowed Temper to actually get that 4K. I mean, of course, you're going to be making mistakes like pushing in to get the frags. There were a couple, I mean, got to be honest, it was just a little bit of frag hunting there. Is they had control of the bomb site, they had the man advantage, they just needed to get the defuse plant, cover their avenues, and wait patiently. But no, we saw a couple players rush in to try and take down Temper individually. And because they allowed Temper to enter into nothing but one-on-one -on -one engagements, it was an extremely impressive clutch from Temper, but it was also handed to him. Gotta, I gotta wonder why England contested that angle, too. Yeah. Sit and wait on the diffuser, mm -hmm. force Temper to come into you, and it's something that we've seen England do a number of times. You lay prone by that doorway, and the moment that they go to push in, it's very easy for you to get that because you know there's a way for them to enter. In this case, though, they, England peaked it early and lost it. Now you can already see that WBG has opened both of those panels up on that garage. And Elevate is gonna do the same thing they did against Most Wanted, which is they're gonna have to play very far back. And that has hurt them every time we've seen that. 
do have a mirror playing inside of the bathroom on the middle floor. Now that, using that mirror window, he is going to try and delay this push onto piano as long as possible. He is in fact going to get opened up actually very early on. That might prompt Geo to simply fall back to the boss fight, but no, Skies tries to save the mirror window. Unfortunately, a little bit too little too late there. And as a result, now the mirror window has been disabled in, in bathroom, which nullifies that roam game inside of the bathroom itself. And the main garage panels, both one and two, have been opened up. Shuttle elsewhere is going to get a kill onto Tranks, though. That's going to be very good for Elevate. Their roam game still alive and well. World Best Gaming not really putting any emphasis on that right now. Instead, trying to focus primarily on a straight take into the bomb site. Kid Geo going to be the one to try and confront this head on using a C4. He is going to get flashbanged, but I don't think that's going to matter much as there's nobody from World Best Gaming trying to you know, even play off that flashbang. Simply going to blind uh, Kid Geo for a second. England's still on that mirror window, and the challenge continues. Gun Havoc going to nade himself, and the momentum continues to dissipate here for World Best Gaming. A seemingly successful hold, not necessarily entirely up to elevate, but still a successful hold all the same. That's the type of momentum that you'll ride to victory, potentially in the round, or at least one more to go as you hear the cavalcade of smokes go off and Temper's gonna have to push in and get a plant. You can see the amount of cameras right now that is being used and what a throw by Geo onto Temper. That's gonna take him out as smoke goes down now. Yeti is gonna get a kill and first for WBG this round as England is off the board. Dynasty's gonna have to charge in but from above gets picked apart. Oh, and Shuttle and Skies do clean up work as Yeti was able to get another but not good enough. Elevate, signs of life, tied up, one apiece. So that round, World Best Gaming straight stalled out outside the garage. Lost a couple players to the wrong game of Elevate, didn't really attempt to clear it in any meaningful fashion, and it was a pretty simple hold. And Gun and Havoc going was, to the going to the King Leo yeah. school of, uh, of grenade tosses. We've I seen mean, two students today with him in Eclipse. Yeah, so um, so King Leo, he, he, <laughs> he got a couple, just on the story of this, King Leo got a couple um, team kills, and I think it was just a self-kill as well with his nade in the pro league. He got on. team killed. Okay. Yeah, it was a team, team killed. He got yeah. team killed. And anyways, just some, some mixed matches with those nades, unfortunate. And then <laughs> today, he came out with some amazing nade play. Uh, Eclipse had a couple mistakes, and then he came out with amazing uh, gameplay. So now, Gun Havoc, he's, he's the one. It. He's killed himself with his nade. <laughs> now, we got to get a couple great gun, or excuse me, Gun Havoc uh, nade kills here to kind of even it out and continue the trend. So it's on you, Gun Havoc. You have some nade kills, man, I believe. And it's that will be worrisome of your Elevate because it does appear that there is a curse. You nade yourself or you almost nade yourself and then you, it's almost like it brings you back from the dead. And right. in this case- It's like, oh, I need to be better. They, uh, <laughs> Tranks went upstairs and my observation was that Tranks went upstairs to hunt roamers by himself yeah. as Buck, which is okay from time to time. But in this case with Elevate, there wasn't really much they could do. Geo and Skies were too much for them. They lost the ability to blast open those floors or ceilings if, if you're Elevate and apply that pressure. And then when Gun Havoc went down too, you now have a lot less avenues to get those crossfires for the plants as well. Dynasty missed a pretty easy shot, if I can say, on oh, yeah. Geo when he rotated. And that right there was an important frag to have gotten. They weren't able to do so, and then it just fell apart. And I have to say, what's up with that trying to ro clear all of the roamers from Elevate by yourself? I mean, again, we talked about this the last time we saw, oh, wow, opens up the angle onto Yeti, but doesn't capitalize on it. You need to keep shooting, Shuttle. An unfortunate mistake there is going to cost them a little bit of momentum, and uh, Yeti's going to be able to walk away with his life. That's even more important because it's smoke as well. That means that as the last minute ticks away here, every single second counts more because smoke can delay for all... If you're, if you're good smoke, you can delay up to a minute with those three gas grenades. But uh, yeah, what's up with trying to clear out one of the most notorious Rome games in the entire North American Pro League? That's the Sky Blacksing Rome uh, duo by yourself. That just seems foolhardy. Nope, oh, first kill of this round. Got to be Geo on the temper. Very important kill that. Clear. Still half the round to go for these attackers, um, but there is also Gun Havoc positioning himself quite wisely inside of Passport. It's gonna be challenged by Laxing, but he might not. Laxing might not even drone this out as Shuttle gets this a second kill through the floor onto Yeti. Dynasty now playing in pipes is gonna be spotted and marked. All that Skies needs to do is simply walk down those stairs and pre-fire the corner. Now a two on five, and it's just down to the roamers. No anchors left on the bomb side. As soon as Elevate pushes in, they're going to get that defuse plant, and here it comes. Gun Havoc now the last as Tranks gets taken out on his rotation back. 
Gun Havoc inside of the kitchen has to ace to bring this back, and I don't think it's gonna happen. Hijio runs into the kitchen, is the first kill for Gun Havoc. It's looking a little bit better. Laxing on the back stairs, waiting for the rotation into the locker's hallway. Gun Havoc conscious of this. Disguise from the yellow stairs will finish things up, though, as Gun Havoc peeks around the corner into the hallway, and a very concise round from Elevate. That's the kind of, this is the kind of round that they're gonna need to string together to get themselves back on even footing against WBG. They need to be resilient with the fact that they are now potentially facing elimination in this round. And of course, as you spoke to, Consulate is their map choice. This is where it yeah. needs to happen. They should be comfortable with it. I don't imagine that Elevate is going to be a team that is going to get beaten in the map pick phase. Like we saw, Rogue, I would suspect, probably beat WBG last oh, yeah. time around. And oh. in this case, now WBG, is going to feel a bit more confident on Chalet. It was a commanding performance, a great start. But at the moment, Elevate just looks sharper in almost every way, at least so far, even with WBG stealing round number one. So I wouldn't argue overall that Elevate seems more practice on this map. I would argue that WBG is making a lot of mistakes, like really rookie mistakes. Right. For example, on that last round, just one specific thing that a little bit kind of blows my mind for WBG. I don't think I saw any barbed wire on those yellow stairs, and if I did, there wasn't nearly enough. Um, usually, even if the attackers clear out the barbed wire on the yellow stairs, there'll be tons of reminisce, uh, uh, like little, you know, broken pieces of barbed wire everywhere because you need to put like three or four pieces there, as uh, that's like the main avenue for the attackers to apply pressure outside of the primary garage directly to the bomb site, and it was very well utilized, as you could see there from skies just walking down. As again, no barbed wire, not enough emphasis placed on the very common pushes. So, it seems like Elevate is playing their game here, but it, um. WBG doesn't have anything creative or new or fresh that like they did on Chalet to show on Consulate. Uh, and they're also missing a couple of their basic things. Um, and if, if you, of course, if it weren't for Temper, this would be a 3-0 right now. So right. Elevate def definitely seeming a lot stronger, obviously. So the question then becomes, if we get to Border, who's gonna be the more proficient team on that map? Because it is coming down mostly just to mistakes made by each side. No, on this round though, WBG pushing in through the admin are going to very effectively get their way in there without losing any serious momentum. No mirror windows on the elevate side of things, so they're not trying to stall up from cafeteria. And as a result, WBG, while still being methodical and slow, have pushed their way in without any serious, well, again, no serious problems, I already said it. They are going to eventually start challenging that main hallway. And England's gonna be the player inside of the A-bomb site. The nade from Gun Havoc, what a excellent nade. Straight into the bomb site, perfectly timed. And that is gonna be a lot of pressure alleviated for WBG pushing into the A. And the C4 miss from Elevate now. That's even worse. I, you lost your smoke. We, I was gonna touch upon how great these vault cams are, but as you touched on, as, Kit, or as Geo gets Yeti to make it a 4-4, and now he's going to look to make sure that anybody that pushes in doesn't have the opportunity to really get any kind of leverage on them. Gun Havoc is gonna be under fire from Shuttle. Geo is also gonna do double duty. This is a nail biter as Shuttle takes Gun Havoc and Tranks to Shuttle. Geo to Tranks, and now, Dynasty is gonna wait to see if Geo's gonna push, but he will look away as he gets that cam. Sky's around oh. the corner, and Dynasty is gonna manage to get away without being seen. It's him versus Temper. Are we going to see another clutch? As at the moment, Elevate positioned very well for the push from World Best Gaming to come in. You can see Laxing gonna pick off Dynasty. It's just Temper left in a 3v1. We've seen him in this position before, but it's a lot of pressure this time around, and will he have that same magic to do it again? Elevate will be patient. There's one sixth of the round still to go, 30 seconds, Temper softens up a corner, tries to draw them out and will now move into the copy room. Spotted by Skies. Oh, and what a shot from Temper on the Skies. He's still got two left, and he knows that Laxing lies in wait. He'll get shot at by Geo, can't get the kill, and he'll try to go for Laxing. Under Aww. fire, the magic runs out. Elevate pulls ahead to 3 1, and it looked for a moment there like Temper was going to get it yet again. The difference, though, Elevate playing smart and slow, not taking the risks, completely unnecessary risks that they took on that first round when they were pushing into Temper. Um, they didn't give him an inch. Um, actually, they did. Skies 
did peek very aggressively as that pulse, thinking he could handle temper, playing in the printer. And he made that mistake of dying there. But immediately after, the important thing, Geo and Laxing completely fell off. They're like, all right, 10 seconds? No, we're not taking this fight. We will wait. He has no chance of killing both of us and playing the Diffuser unless we give him that chance. And they didn't. So, good lock out there from Elevate. Significant lead as well. That's very important. Um, the one thing I want to emphasize on that round that ultimately did uh, end up costing WBG it overall, uh, because they seem to have a very, very good early round, very easy control over the uh, media, or the admin office, was they could not get rid of Geo playing the angle all the way from the bathroom. That's pretty much it. I mean, if they had dealt with that, because of course they got the early kill on the smoke with that nade from Gun Havoc. That was beautiful. Then the C4 from Pulse, Skies, below, missed entirely. But as they pushed into the A bomb site every single time, who's winning? Geo, inside of the bathroom. This is the kind of renaissance of Geo that we need to see as Elevate looks to continue to inch their way toward winning this map and sending us to the decider on Border, which at this point, I would say that Border is probably in favor of Elevate, but I don't know I mean, by who knows? how much. Exactly, right. we, who knows? Because map number one went to WBG in, and I'd say a pretty convincing manner, which... I, I mean, I think it all, again, it just comes back to, and obviously this should be the case, but um, it, a lot, oh, the mirror window gets sniped by Laxing. He's doing a very good job of opening up that specific mirror window throughout this match, um, and it's aided his team a lot in clearing out the admin and making that push happen. Which, by the way, this is the attack that both teams have been utilizing for this top four hole. Free fire comes out from Geo, not gonna find anything. Dynasty gonna fall off this, very wise there. He is on one HP, he will likely be reset at some point by his teammates. I'd be surprised if he wasn't. Yeah, I mean a three armor on one HP. You get it back up to 50, that's like there a whole go. extra bullet for most guns. There's the reset. And you'll get them back up. No Rook armor, so they have to use the cover of that wall and the bullet pen to ensure a down but not out. As Geo concussed, sitting inside of that open area up top. Or cubicles, rather. The admin office. Admin office, yeah. All the different callouts that people use for it, or I've heard there, used before. There are many. It's very similar to Circle Couch on Coastline. How it has Circle Couch? It's it has VIP, like, come it has, on. It has like four different callouts. You know, I used to call it Circle Couch, but come on, it's VIP. It says it on the map, and that is so much easier. Oh my god. <laughs> but the couch is a circle as Skies gets a kill on Dynasty, and that's a wonderful kill from him. You can see that they have softened up Yeti as well. Oh, the well. run out the front door. Oh. Gun, Gun Havoc. Havoc did manage to go out and get Skies. As England and Laxing able to get Tranks, and Yeti Temper's gonna get one, and he's gonna fall. He's on one HP as well, so Gun Havoc is the only one who's whole, but he doesn't last very long. His shuttle, a nice shot on him. The ghost of Temper still haunts the halls of Consulate, and it's him versus three. Attackers Once again, it's Temper, last man standing. He's essentially a dead man walking, though. Like you said, on that one HP. The ghost of Temper? Yeah, perfect. Exactly. He'll try to push up yellow stairs. He's got two perfectly well-heeled opponents, and then England, who sustained some damage, but just a scratch. And what is Elevate doing? They are not giving Temper an opportunity, playing extremely safe. You see you see there, even Geo, after Upon missing those shots located. with the pre-fire, falls off the angle. He doesn't want to risk it. Candela is coming out. Shuttle holding it from the long angle. Absolutely not an inch given here from Elevate, and now, match point. They didn't bother to peek, and that was one thing that I saw, is when they lost September first round, they peaked all peak, at separate peak. times. The third time that you just saw the previous round, what happened was that they waited in the crossfire. You saw Laxing got a couple shots off from behind the cover of that down table as Geo was able to provide some fire. Or another, not exactly a crossfire in perfect sense, but from two separate angles, they were attacking him. And it was unfortunate for Temper because he wasn't able to prioritize which one to go for. He ended up losing that to Geo. And this time, they didn't even bother to create a crossfire. They just waited yeah. and used all those sites that had been opened up by WBG. And as he tried to retake that site, they just picked him apart. And now we find ourselves on match point, a very different story than number one. And it's down in the basement, too. This is the bomb site that Elevate, I would say, really started the complete momentum um, landfall for their team here as they push themselves into, again, like such a lead they have. WBG, last time they attacked this bomb site, got com absolutely stalled out. Uh, they lingered outside the main uh, dr uh, garage, and they lost a couple of people trying to hunt down roamers by themselves for whatever reason. 
And if that happens that here again, of course we're going to see map number three. And that, uh, just for a reminder for anyone who, uh, oh, I like the single that they're opening up here. This is going to be used to deny, I believe, the window if somebody's going to try and repel into piano from above. Uh, Elevate, again, they have been putting a big emphasis on the Rome game for this map. But anyway, if this is a win here on this round or any round for the next three, um, then Elevate will put it onto Border. No overtime potential for WBG, which I don't think would be a big surprise for anyone. I'm expecting that third map. I'd like to see that third map as this has been a tr great match. Uh, but it, it comes down to if WBG are going to get stalled outside because that's, exactly, that's what happened last time, and we can't see it from them again. They're I, also not... Oh, no, go ahead. I was just going to say, I like that they're doing this. I like that they've been able to give this opportunity for WBG to open these panels up. Last time, I think it lulled WBG into a false sense of security, and it worked very well in their favor. And by playing as far back as they did, it allowed them the opportunity to collapse when WBG pushed. There was also the main mistake, though, last time they were attacking this way, uh, is that they lost so much manpower elsewhere. Um, so sure, they did get stalled outside the garage, but they didn't really effectively clear the roamers as well as they lost a bunch of people to those roamers. A little bit of a mistake there made by Gun Havoc, but that's okay. But they're not doing that this time. They're not putting a lot of emphasis on clear, well, any emphasis at all on clearing the roam game. They are simply playing outside the garage. Now, arguably, this is a tremendous mistake and will be um, hurt by the Elevate hold. Uh, but if they do it correctly, it's possible. The main problem is going to be that mirror window uh, all the way in office, and uh, England, who is rotating to the back of white. But as the smokes go down and the flashbangs out, Yeti's gonna go for a very quick plant in front of the black car. Kijio rotating over to the pipes. He might get the C4 off and deny this defuse plant. It will not get Thermite. The defuse plant goes down. The kill's coming out for the attackers and the defenders alike. A four on three. WBG have the defuse plant. They just need to wait outside for the aggression to come from Elevate. They have everything in their favor despite, uh, except for that man advantage. Elevate. Starting their push. They knew they need to play this very smart. Defender has been discovered. The run out from Laxing. He is going to be caught off guard, but Temper not pushing the angle. Very wise there from Temper. Sky's going to get the first kill of this onto Dynasty Shuttle. Another one onto Tranks. It's all down to Temper, and the defenders defuse the diffuser. Excuse me, disable the diffuser, and it will be the match point. It's all over. Elevate pushing it on to map number three. An excellent. Retake there from Elevate, despite it being very wisely played from WBG. I'm surprised. I, I think the biggest component there was Laxing did a fantastic job outside to distract, but more than that was the key, mm -hmm. the key component of that was making sure that Dynasty, who had coverage over that, over that diffuser, was eliminated and removed from the equation. And when they were able to do that, Skies was able to peek out. He got the kill onto Dynasty. Then the pressure that was left on them, at that point, Temper had to say, are we gonna go for the Diffuser, which is being attacked by England at that point, or do I worry about Laxing coming up on me? But while we ponder that, let's take a look at what happened just now on Consulate. Elevate taking a 5-1 victory, and we go to match number three as we throw to our highlights from the last map. I mean, overall, Clearly, the map was better played by Elevate, and I would say that they are deserving of that win. The only round that WBG managed to take away from it was this one right here from Temper. Excellent double kill. The second one into England especially. Beautiful. But that was the only round they won. And that last round we just watched seemed like they had it in the bag, really. Um, they got that fuse plant very aggressively into the uh, bomb site. Whew. Temper really on fire in that map. Unfortunately, they were uh, incapable of holding it, and... I don't know, I, again, I'm really kind of surprised. Yeah, sure there was a distraction from Laxing, but Temper was not really, he wasn't peeking into that. You know, right. he wasn't applying too much emphasis on it. He was instead prioritizing the diffuser, but he didn't even, he just didn't deny it. He just couldn't get on that angle. I don't think he was expecting Elevate to start diffusing, or excuse me, start disabling the diffuser so early on into that retake. No, and, and I noticed a couple things from WBG when they were attacking the garage and consulate was that even after they got those panels open, they would stack up two or three operators there. Yeah. It was a very heavy smoke at the plant off and get out of their push. Dynasty missed his shots on Geo, who was able to get the nitro cell over top of the car, but not secure the kill on Yeti, which was okay, but they were still almost able to stop that diffuse plant. That can't happen, and I worried for WBG because they weren't able to really put pressure on the back of the site you basically gave Elevate an opportunity to not have to look behind them at any point, and that's something you can't do if your push is all coming in one direction. Yeah, and that, I, I honestly, it's 
you know, hate to harp on the strategy to be specific, but like while there was a lot of mistakes made in their execution, mm -hmm. it comes down to the execution as well. I mean, right. come on, we're we're talking about it, a straight garage push in 2017, guys. I mean, this is the sort of thing that was popular back in like the very first couple seasons of Pro League of Consulate, and it it is so so easy to counter. I get smoke and being more prominent, you know, with their much better now. It's it's in theory more more uh it works but it but it doesn't though i mean come on it's just pressure from one side it was very easy for elevate to just like okay well if you're gonna just push from garage we'll just put everyone looking at garage wait for that push wait for that pressure pick off people as you do it and even if you get that a fuse plant you're gonna be at such a man disadvantage that it doesn't matter and that's exactly what happened right and it happened twice too because i mean the first time they didn't even get the diffuse plant. no and it was it was just a situation where that could have very easily been an Elevate 5-0, and they really yeah. struggled. I found WBG really struggled to find themselves getting their footing, especially after they were knocked off so early. And and like I said, I think it could have been a completely different game if they had a one round number two, because you would have had now two rounds in a row, the first round which you stole away from Elevate, and yeah. now you have the confidence to do that, and you're going to see shakiness from your opponent. But as we head to Border, this is a map that I think is really going to benefit the way that Elevate plays. Yeah, I think I honestly I completely agree. Um, the problem that we had from WBG on that last map was a distinct lack of roam clear. And we're come on border. This is a map that can be very heavily. You can use roamers on border just as, as well as you can use them on consulate. So it's likely that we're gonna see elevate play the roam game very well. WBG possibly ignore it, like we saw just now on consulate, which uh, is is hope hopefully that doesn't happen. But if that does, I think that it elevates just going to slip away with a very early lead, and uh, maybe Temper will get a couple rounds by himself. But that's not going to be enough to win overall. And actually, ne neg on that because it, temp Temper was not given that opportunity to get any more clutches after his first one. Right. Elevate was like, no, yeah, uh -uh -uh. they deprived him of it. I mean, they were kind of half. I mean, Skies did get a little too aggressive on the on Temper when he was inside of Printer, but. Right after that, they're like completely shut down. We're not rushing him. We're just playing the objective. Wait, 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 wait. Uh, foot off the gas, and they managed to lock it out. And that was could changes by Elevate. Glad they made that um, decision. So, it it's it seems like Elevate has really like locked it down in this match. Right. And when we look to Border now, that ability to not hunt down the roamers, like you said, not only does it allow you to play a roam game similar to Consulate, but how many sites do we see on Border where the roam game will comprise the majority of your defense as well? And that's an issue, especially with the way that we have seen Elevate play the levels so well, playing above and below. Yeah, so uh, on, on Border, Customs is gonna be played from above. Um, ventilation, usually a uh, pretty significant emphasis is placed on the top floor. Uh, and when it comes to armory, even then, we usually don't see three roamers, two anchors, usually two, three anchors, two roamers, but we will see um, some pressure put downstairs. So the roam game is very much apparent on border, same as consulate. And again, that's, that's the problem with, uh, well, that's the problem for WBG to face here in this match. And I think that they definitely have the potential to make that change. Um, and I hope they do, because I feel like they were really ignoring, again, just a very a primary function of playing on Consulate is dealing with and having roamers. But we'll see. We'll see what happens. As we load into the match, it is again going to be Border as our third map of this series. World Best Gaming won on the first map that was Chalet in spectacular fashion, I have to say. And then Consulate Elevate took that in much more definitive fashion in that 5-1. Absolutely. You can't, it's very difficult for you to look at a 5-1 and say that that was a closely fought contest unless every single one of those rounds goes as close as possible. But Border is going to be the site of our tiebreaker. Implications are the loser has to potentially contend with losing their spot in Pro League and the winner will go on to face Most Wanted for second and third and figure out what Defenders team your will go to playoffs. Losing their spot in Pro League for this season. Of course, they're going to be given the opportunity to play next season, but be done for the regular. Oh, right. For, yes. for, yeah. no, I, no, no, I meant, sorry. <laughs> I meant that you. once the season is done, yeah. you potentially have to play for your spot against the top two teams in Challenger League, and that's something that no team wants to find themselves doing, especially WBG, who just found their way in here, as we said earlier on in the broadcast. Yep. But first round, 
already a bit of a surprise. We're going for the ventilation room rather than the top floor. So, interesting little change from Elevate. Uh, one thing I will say that I'm glad it's not, it's not a Teller's bathroom defense. <laughs> We're not trying to lose the first round for no apparent reason. And uh, I can appreciate that. Attackers really appreciate that. Attackers are heading out to defuse a bomb. And as you can see here, lots of emphasis placed on the top floor from Elevate. They are going to be putting two players, it seems, Laxing and Shuttle, roaming in the Armory and the Archives. Now Skies will run off to do his thing as well. Oh. Oh, and... <laughs> Gun Havoc somehow <laughs> manages to sneak a kill on Shuttle while Laxing was posted up in that office. And now he's going to look to rotate too as he gets spotted. And a nice grenade primed by Gun Havoc, but it doesn't look like it's going to be able to get him. It's going to take a chunk of his health. And now Laxing is in deep trouble too. Some excellent play here from Gun Havoc just at the start of this round doing more than 100 damage to two separate players and eliminating one of them. That's really what you want to have in the first 40 seconds. Now, World Wars Gaming, they have com they have established complete control over this top floor. They're going to start opening up um, the wall into archives from the offices. And then the uh, drop downs will follow shortly thereafter, as well as Tranks is likely to start to push into Armory and open up plenty of holes to establish vertical dominance and give more avenues for WBG to utilize, leading into the le last legs of this round. England playing as Ella is a surprise. That's not something that we've seen too many times, if at all, right yeah. now. It's interesting how little, or how less than normal we've been seeing Sensor Ella active. played, in general, throughout today. She's, she's still been played most often, but uh, less prominent than yesterday, I would argue. Absolutely. Less prominent than the 80-some-odd percent that we've seen her used in Regions 2 if you've been following the Operator Defense Pick Rate stats that we've been running up. Now, Yeti, of course, doesn't do a ton of damage with that gun. Laxing is going to be able to avenge Shuttle, who he let perish earlier on in the round by picking away at Yeti. And now Skies is just a man on the run as they're going to try to find him and hunt him down as he and Laxing sits just inside of Customs. Gun Havoc still from above as we are just under a minute left in round number one. A strong start from WBG, but Elevate seems to have found their footing and it is a much even contest, or a much more even contest. Dynasty will soften up that shot on the wall after getting hit with the concussion mine. And the last exothermic charge is going to go down. Last and far off sight. No risk there of a bandit charge whatsoever. WBG just appears to be stalled out. England's going to get some shots off on Tranks, and he's going to exhaust his clip as Laxing gets one on to Gun Havoc. Give the advantage in favor of Elevate. Temper will drop and just gets obliterated by England. Now 4v2 as Geo is able to pick up one on Tranks. 4v1 as Laxing cleans up Dynasty, and what a showing from Elevate. After they lost one, they take round number one by putting five Operator kills in a row together. Absolutely dominant round there for Elevate, despite losing that top four control very early on into the round. We really just didn't need it. It was a simple thing to deny the vertical dominance by pushing further back into the site. And because World Best Gaming didn't really put enough emphasis on it, it wasn't able to be utilized to its fullest. Uh, and when they pushed into the site itself, it was pretty easy for um, Skies to, or excuse me, for Elevate as a whole to simply just retake in through the archives. After such a start that looked so good for World Best Gaming as well, I was yeah. I was astonished with how quickly. I'm a little disappointed as well they weren't able to capitalize on it. The fact that the frag didn't go far enough to get Laxing, I think, was a crucial issue for them as well. Because yeah. if they had been able to pick off Laxing, then you get both the roamers down, other than Skies, who now has to play a bit more tight. And look at that, Laxing was able to pick up three if they had been able to prioritize him. I mean, you can you can put it on the nade. You can also put it on the fact that yeah, well, okay, Gun Havoc got a great kill through the wall under shuttle, impressive. But he kind of just completely overlooked it's laxing. Yes. He dropped down from that shelf, so there were two opportunities missed there from Gun Havoc. And of course, it's not really all on him. But that could have made their life well. It would have certainly made their life much easier. The numbers don't lie. Those three kills did. Whoa, this is interesting. Frank's going to be playing on a mirror window in the main hallway. As soon as Elevate establishes control over the top of East Stairs, he's going to die or have to fall off that position. You can see, though, Temper is the reason they're playing this. Temper's going to be playing very aggressively over by office desks, 
looking to deny that top four east stairs control as well as gun havoc inside the east stairs itself with those ella charges he's actually going to be a very good choice of operator to hold this i like what i see here from wbg this is going to stall out the attack a lot as you can see it's already being effective against skies who is trying to get aggressive on to the ella but unsuccessful due to those traps this is one of those strategies where when it falls apart, it really falls apart. That because is true. You, can, you lose control of so many avenues through border that when this ends, you're in trouble. And you can just see their gun havoc lost that ADS on the wall as Skies has sustained some damage. And they're still waiting to try to flush him out. Now Skies wow. almost loses his life. He's going to try to flash gun havoc. Geo's going to get first kill on Yeti. Skies tries to rush in. Gun goes down, but Geo gets kill number two before Temper refrags. So a frenzy as it is a 3v3. Absolute calamity right now for them as WBG still holding on. They have not completely lost control as well of that hallway, which is so important for this strategy to work. But as you take a look at the time, we are only halfway through the round. And so while the attack will stall out, they still have the ability to recover from it. They haven't wasted so much time that this is gonna be bad. Laxing also, again, gotta give props to Laxing. Coming off of Blackbeard onto Twitch, but he has been amazing on Twitch. He always gets that. It seems like he always gets the mirror window every single time. And we've seen a lot of Twitches fail to do this in the past. And it's really cool to see Laxing, no matter what job you put him on, he's always just fulfilling his role. He will be playing off this broken mirror window, looking for an angle onto the bandit who is playing very safe. That's smart by Tranks. He knows he's the Bomb only one with Dynasty, excuse me, playing inside a bunker to hold out this A push. As it starts to come, England going to open up that A wall. The nades coming out to try and snag Tranks that will be unsuccessful. A couple damage being done there, but the second one downs Dynasty. That's very important. As Laxing pushes in, it's going to be Tranks now to challenge this. He's going to miss the initial shots, but so will Laxing. But no! The follow-up from Laxing will get two kills, taking out Tranks and Dynasty both, and now it's all down to Temper. We've seen it from him before. Coming from behind, Shuttle's going to say, no, sir. No, thank you. Don't want any of that. You're off the board. And it's going to be Elevate, putting themselves in a two-round lead on this third map. Excellent execution there. Good rotation, seeing that there's a lot of pressure placed on the office side of things, the east stairs, and saying, all right, we'll go over there. We'll just go over to the A wall. We'll go over to CCTV instead. As soon as we disable the east stairs, push into that hallway, get rid of the mirror window player in the hallway, denying that CCTV push. And then it was a pretty simple take from there. The nade also... I didn't see who that was, but whoever that was, that nade it's onto the, the buck of shuttle. Was that the buck shuttle? Thank you very much. The nade from shuttle onto the mirror inside of the bunker was oh so crucial. Denying the crossfire between Tranks and the mirror was Attackers paramount to, to that and push. And you had Laxing just able to work his way in and to take Tranks as Tranks tried to hug that bomb for cover. Elevate now finds themselves up to nothing. And they, I liked, like you said, the rotation. They realized that they weren't going to contest that site. Office was a right off, so let's stack up to armor. Dynasty was in tough shape. They still had those frags available to them. And look at Laxing. He has had such a tremendous performance so far today. And right now, 5-0-0. Oh, oh. Round number three, five kills. No slouch. I already talked about it. But I, I want to just re talk about it again. Yeah, we're going to talk about it again. I just want to re-emphasize <laughs> the great Five Twitch seconds. play from Laxing. Because, again, it's it's coming off of a role that is conceivably to some people, like playing Blackbeard, that's the, oh, that's the role you put your, your least efficient player on or something like that. And Laxing performed amazingly on that role. Better than most, I would argue. And then taking him off of that, putting him onto Twitch now, and he's doing the same thing again, really using his drones properly. I mean, we see, uh, we haven't seen him make any serious Twitch drone mistakes yet in this setup. They're gonna go out from Gun Havoc and open up that Castle Barricade. He's gonna get a follow-up kill right after onto England. Every time Gun Havoc gets on this balcony, he gets a kill. Great play for Gun Havoc there. And unfortunately, Tranks not gonna be so lucky as Laxing takes him out inside the office. Temper at the top of these east stairs. Laxing gonna be challenging. I believe the Claymore may not, it didn't go down, wait, it didn't go down, and because of that, Habana will be flanked by Laxing, an excellent second frag there as he falls down, taking out Temper.
The Candela's though going down into the B bomb site. The run out from Sky is going to get two outside on the north balcony and inside B itself. Dynasty, the last attacker alive, trying to get the defuse plant, but no, the collapse from Shuttle and Elevate as a whole will deny this B take outright. A nice attempt from World Best Gaming, but not enough. Elevate now, 3 0 lead, seeming very dominant on border. WBG just falling apart at the seams right now, and it looks like Elevate has finally, re they've remembered what made them such a frightening team to compete against last season. And yeah. now what is really putting them up over the <laughs> over the last eight rounds, WBG has been able to string together one round win. That's it. And sorry, nine rounds rather, because the last eight have been won consecutively by Elevate. So they haven't lost a round in eight tries. Yeah, Elevate really saying definitively, we are Elevate. And we Academy will not be dissuaded from this matchup by losing the first map. Because again, clearly WBG really had a grasp on Chalet. I think that's probably, I would say that's their map. I'm pretty sure that's like, that is just WBG's map, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, moving forward, I doubt they're going to get much chance to play it in the Pro League uh, if they continue on to the next season or if they manage to come back in the later ends of this map and get that second map win and get themselves into the next bracket. And then one thing to really touch upon, yeah, too, is it's, you see that it, almost every team excels better in their second season in Pro League. Take a look at Infamy. Take yes. a look at Most One. Yeah. If WBG, let's say the WBG loses here, they go to relegations, but they defend their spot. I'm going to be expecting a much improved WBG next time around. And that's something that happens is because of how short these seasons are in the turnaround. Yeah. It was only a couple months ago that WBG earned their spot in Pro League, and with the meta shift, it's very difficult for you to be able to acclimate to the challenges that you have to face with much stiffer competition. You have to unlearn the bad habits that you picked up in ranked, in Challenger League, and in previous seasons, and now you have to adapt to the way that the other teams play, and that is a tall task to do, while also learning the maps that you should and shouldn't be playing, and the way you should and shouldn't be playing on those maps. One thing I'd like to emphasize here is how safe Dynasty is playing to protect his mirror window. He is holding a hard angle onto that A wall uh, door because he is waiting for Laxing's drone. You can see him. Look, he's waiting for it. He's like, oh, it's coming. And there it is. Dynasty finally locking down Laxing's drone. Here comes the follow up, though. Will he get the second? No! <laughs> Another successful opening of the mirror window. Good job, Laxing. And a nice attempt from Dynasty, though. And smart for him to stack those up as well. He had one right there and then threw the other, and yeah. they immediately came in the exact same direction yeah. because I have a feeling he knew that there was going to be some focus on taking those drones out. Yeah, so he didn't... That's something that's that's a trick that a lot of people actually just don't use straight up on Twitch is having both of your drones spawned already, ready uh, ready to go and push in at the same exact time basically, uh, and that is some I, I think I've only ever seen Laxing do that. That's definitely going to be new meta uh, for every Twitch moving forward. I guarantee you, when someone's like, "Yeah, we need to get this mirror window open up," we're gonna have two Twitch drones stacked outside of said mirror window before he even tries with the first. But that said, mirror window opened up. A wall also opened up. That's panel number two. Yeti gonna barely stay alive there. Laxing unfortunately missing the shot. Here come the smokes and the Candela's hit Geo going for the diffuse plant right in the middle of said smokes. And the C4 from below. Dynasty getting rid of that diffuse planter. As WBG also propped themselves up to push into this cafeteria that Pulse sees Shuttle through the wall and will hit the shot. Excellent kill there onto Shuttle. Another from Gun Havoc onto England elsewhere. And it looks like this might be round number one for WBG. Yeti getting another kill onto Skies. It's all laxing inside of Small Office as he takes out Dynasty. He has two more to find. Gun Havoc taking a couple shots there, but finally finishing off laxing as he pushes into the bomb site. A good hold there from WBG. And I really love what they did on the roam game. World Best Gaming finally finding a way to stop the bleeding that has been going on since round number one of Consulate. So essential.
and now they've been able to get a better grasp of what they're dealing with. But now you're going to move Elevate back to defense, where they have looked unstoppable for yep. almost the last 10 rounds. Their attacks have been a bit shakier, but their defenses have looked rock solid. And that's an issue, because even though Elevate is still winning on both attack and defense, it's the defense that I fear attack more. You are still in a position where you were down 3-1. to one, And we are going to see a Customs hold, as Laxing leads the way for his team. And the key for me, England cannot afford to die early on in the round if they want to see some <laughs> longevity out of this site. Specifically to Gun Havoc, too. Exactly. He's been getting a lot of really good frags. Uh, obviously, he's leading the way for his team as well with five kills, as opposed to the rest of his team's one. Um, so really, two people standing up here, Laxing and Gun. So, this strat, very interesting strategy that has become more popular as of late. Is going to be implemented here by Elevate. They're going to be prioritizing control over the top floor, that CCTV. As long as they can maintain control over CCTV, they can make maintain control over both the bomb sites. Open up each of these drop downs. Use that mirror window to keep control of CCTV, as well as a mirror window inside of Armory to keep control of the west balcony outside of CCTV, so that the CCTV players do not get overly pressured. They're also opening up plenty of holes above the bomb sites to deny any immediate diffuse plant rushes from WBG. So. I have actually, as of yet, to see a proper thought-out strategy to perfectly attack this bomb site, but I have a hunch here, ladies and gentlemen, that the primary way that uh, WBG is going to be attacking this is taking care of this mirror window shuttle he's utilizing, and then pushing in through the west balcony into armory. Once they have armory control, they can start pressuring CCTV. Once they have CCTV control, they can start pressuring the bomb site. We'll see how that works out for them, though as they start to linger outside of both bunker, or excuse me, box, not bunker, and the balcony of CCTV. Most of the attackers downstairs looking to pressure in through that box that I think they have just opened. Gun Havoc was able to get a grenade off, and we don't see the patented Gun Havoc combo that we've seen so far on Border, which is that he breaks a panel, gets a kill, tosses the grenade. So far, no success there as we narrow in on that halfway mark of round number five. Implications here are if Elevate wins this round, we go to match point, and we're just waiting for WBG, which appears to actually be changing its strategy around now as Gun and Yeti will get an escort, or rather, Yeti will get an escort from Gun. And a bit more of a direct hold now as they're going to take the stairs and find their way down towards the main lobby. You can see Laxing is primed and ready. That, of course, Castle Barricade is going to pause Gun Havoc unless he still has a frag grenade at his disposal to use it. You can hear he picks away at the camera and now they'll drone oh, him out. No. I don't know if Trank saw him, but Gun Havoc does and immediately retreats. A smart idea when squaring off against somebody who is playing as well as Laxing is right now. And what a shot from Gun Havoc! A refrag from Skies as Yeti goes down. But you've lost that formidable fragging power that you had. Now Shuttle's gonna try to get back on site and watch in the box, but Gun Havoc looking the wrong way. The UMP tears through him and Elevate now holds an advantage as Tranks is gonna pressure him, but Shuttle's gonna go for the kill, doesn't land any of his shots. You see Tranks doesn't miss, Skies gets two! Oh my goodness on Temper and Dynasty as Tranks manages to pick off Shuttle. It is 1v3 and it's gonna be Geo from above pushing us to match point as Tranks, the last member of World Best to fall and Elevate one round away from meeting Most Wanted for a very important rematch. Still every chance in the world, though, that WBG can get this comeback and push it to that overtime. However, three rounds in a row, that's a tall order, ladies and gentlemen, and it doesn't seem like Elevate is going to let them fulfill it. As they move on to the attack, it is going to be a ventilation room workshop defense from WBG. No mirror windows this time for Laxing to open up, but are they going to be able to deal with Attackers the pressure? coming from wherever Elevate chooses to go. And this is the big thing, is that Elevate can actually kind of just maneuver however they wish in this instance. They could be coming from outside the B bomb site, just kind of walk in through the front door. They could just be coming into the top floor, as is pretty typical. Or they could just come in through office, establish control over archives, deny that drop down control to the defenders, open up the teller's wall and then the bathroom wall and push into the A bomb site. There's so many choices here for elevators. I believe this is the first time, I want to say, that WBG has been uh, defending anything but armory. 
a risky gamble, Five seconds remaining. but they have no choice. Yep. They have a pretty decent setup here for this uh, for this defense, um, and it's going to be prioritizing control over the top floor, as you can see, with a lot of the holes that have been opened up, which I think is um, it's a, an interesting thing to place your stock in when you're not holding when you're dealing with it ventilation room defense. Holding top floor is much more sensible when it comes to CCTV, specifically when you're holding customs, because that's a lot harder to take if set up properly. But the attackers are going to have a lot of room to breathe. Like, specifically, we already see Shuttle taking these ace stairs. That's a big um, that's a big location to have early on in this round. It'll give them some uh, just a point to pivot off of when confronting the rest of the defenders as they roam upstairs. Uh, they are going to be dealing with Gun Havoc inside of CCTV. So that will be a hurdle to jump over. As Geo literally jumps over top of the stairs. Very good timing. Mm -hmm. Perfect. Totally predicted that. <laughs> and I like that Laxing's drone was able to evade those shots earlier on. It's just like they, they've been struggling so hard to take that Twitch drone out and just have had such difficulty so far, and that's been causing major headaches for WBG. And I think, I think that's probably one of the big reasons that they've been losing that top floor, which is now the fact that they're going on to ventilation, that's going to actually, I think it'll help them. This mix-up is probably good. Guys misses a couple shots onto Yeti. A nice opportunity. Very tight angle to hit the shots, though. Can't really hate him for missing that. Uh, the pressure's going to start coming onto the rank or the roamers upstairs in Armory. That's going to be Temper, I believe, as Laxing starts to open up that wall. It's also going to be, I believe, that's Dynasty right next to him. These two trying to duo hold this Armory. I think Gun Havoc also in CCTV. But there's only a minute left here. Elevate starting to get stalled out a little bit, and Gun Havoc starting to apply some pressure to this main hallway. If he does this at the right time, if he pushes into the attackers at the right time, he can catch a lot of Elevate off guard. It seems that their primary goal here is simply to control archives and office, then open up the... They don't have... Oh, no, they do. Excuse me. Open up the bathroom, which is what they're doing right now, and then it will be a simple push into A. 45 seconds in what could be the penultimate round of this matchup between two teams that seemed a lot more even on round number one, but so far has been all elevated. It's up to WBG to claw back and prove their worth. Skies is going to be able to get a kill on Tranks. That's leadoff as Geo adds to that death toll by taking Dynasty down. 5v3 in favor of Elevate, but Gun Havoc's going to come down for the rotate. He's going to take Geo down just inside a bathroom, and he still has company with England in there as well. An Elamine is going to go down, and England is going to be hard pressed to get out and work through that smoke with just 15 seconds to go and he holds on to that diffuser he sees yeti but enshrouded in smoke yeti goes down to the thermite of england he's going to be able to push in now and they're going to start to get that diffuse off as gun havoc rotates in but nobody's there laxing takes out temper he sees england and gets him down and he's going to run out of time and the defenders win wbg hangs on because of gun havoc's clutch kill nobody there to pick up the diffuser and we are still going here on border a huge mistake there by Elevate. They had that round, and they just let it slip away by not having the diffuser in hand, able to finish it out and deny <laughs> the timeout of that round. It's such a, it's honestly heartbreaking to see mistakes like that happen uh, at this level of play. And it seems like that's honestly a lot of the time it just that's the only reason that Elevate even loses a lot of rounds. It's just very basic things like that. Because ev everywhere else, in every other category, Elevate is absolutely decimating. They're doing great right now. They just didn't have the diffuser in hand. They had control over the bomb site, no diffuser. That's it. That's all it was. And Gun Havoc playing very smart, knowing that his only real opportunity was not, in fact, by the way, eight kills. Great job, Gun Havoc. Single handedly carrying that team. Right yeah, it, it, yeah, I mean, 100%. I completely agree. But yeah, so Gun Havoc being very smart there, knowing that, okay, I'm not going to take on the entire Elevate team. So I'll get as many kills as I can, and I'll skirt around the attack, and I will hope and pray that they do not have the Diffuser in hand. In this instance, he was right on the money. Now an Elevate defense of the top floor. They've been pretty successful here so far. Which I would say, I touched on this before, I think Elevate has looked better on defense than they have on attack thus far. And now it's oh, yeah. still problematic because WBG is on the Razor's edge. Match point remains. They have to win two rounds in a row to get themselves out of this pit. It's possible. It's much less daunting than three rounds in a row, which is what we were just at five seconds ago. But it's still 
a large order to fill. In the last 11 rounds, WBG has only been able to win two. They're gonna have to double that without losing a single one or else they potentially fight for their lives in relegation. So a pretty, a pretty big and daunting task ahead of them and it's gonna need all of their composure. And more importantly, it's gonna need more than just Gun Havoc to really carry the weight at the moment. Every single member of WBG capable oh, of no. grabbing the frags. And Skies is gonna make a very big mistake and Gun Havoc isn't gonna go for it. Just tosses the grenade in there and finishes him off. Smart and play. Very smart play, doesn't expose himself, but is able to give an advantage by one to his team. That spray through the wall was almost exactly on Geo's head. He almost got a second frag there, unbeknownst to himself. Laxon gonna get the refrag though, onto Trinx. That is a very important kill. It's gonna be slowing down this attack quite a lot. It's also a soft destructor off the board, the only soft destructor for the attacking team. They have two hard destructors in Temper and Dynasty, that Thermite Habana, and they're gonna be looking to open up that A wall at some point. They have stalled out significantly though. The reason that they've stalled out is because of losing that soft destructor below. His primary goal was to open up that mirror window, which we have just seen Yeti do, and disable the batteries, which we, he did not in fact do, which means that despite opening the mirror window, they still cannot open up the A wall itself. So this attack will continue to stall out as Gun Havoc uses his last nade to get those batteries. He's pulling a lot of weight for his team. And he's gonna get them both. Very successful as we just reach the one minute mark in round Lucky number seven. Attackers have recovered. And Elevate is going to try to be as steadfast as possible as WBG closes in on the site. Candelas will go off. You can see that the Thermite of Dynasty will push in. The Diffuser will go down in that doorway. He's going to take some damage, and a Nitro Cell is going to go out, not get it. And they managed to get that Diffuser down amidst the Chaos Shuttle pushes up, and what a kill on Dynasty. He sees the Diffuser. Is he going to try to long arm it? It looked like he was going to, but isn't going to risk it just yet. There he goes, but picked off. Gun Havoc, a second frag so far. And that Shuttle and Sky's down for him, as now they're going to wait. Laxing runs right into the crosshair of Temper, and Yeti gets one on Geo. It's only England left fighting through the smoke, but England persists, gets Yeti. He's working oh, away on the oh, new no. user. Do they not know oh, that he's no. getting it? Out of nowhere, no. it looks like England is going to be able to snail no. the round for Elevate. Oh, my goodness. And they missed it. WBG unaware. And England clutches it for his team. And Elevate takes it 5-2 to two in what I would say is an extremely defeating defeat if you are world best gaming. Oh, no. Oh, that hurts. That was painful, ladies and gentlemen. I, for, I don't know about for you guys, but that was painful for me to watch. Oh, boy. A lot of excellent play from World Best Gaming going into that round, trying so hard to push themselves <laughs> into that overtime, and then overlooking the Diffuse plant. Just playing way too passive. The last player on Elevate able to clutch that out, get the Diffuse. There was no one in a position to stop him. Elevate 2-1 over top World Best Gaming. And I think that's the result that we expected, but let's, 